Hello my friends, I am Mr. 23 and recently I have participated in Phase Runner contest with this design mostly because I'm in love with fantasy art and I have managed to take the second place. And second place goes to Mr. 23. No stranger to many of you, Mr. 23 always delivers the goods. His entry is full of crisp detail and certainly captures the imagination with his choice of assets. I especially like what he's done with the main character and how it's been truly leveled up from its original state. Awesome stuff. Since I published this design on my Instagram page, I had a lot of requests to show you how I created it. So here it is. Because it took me a few days to finish this artwork, I cannot really explain you all the things that I did in it, but I'll try in 20 minutes to cover the most important parts. Let's go. So basically Phase Runner provided us this template with uh, the tree and the character and also the sky with the grass. So we had to start from here and to create our own design. The first thing that I did when I saw this uh, idea, this template was to draw a sketch. Uh, don't mind the way it looks, <laughs> it was just a start for me. I drew this uh, so I have an idea. I wanted uh, to have the tree on top of a uh, stone arcade and on the far distance on the background I wanted to have uh, some floating islands and some mountains. So I kept uh, the background that uh, Face Runner provided, also the sky and I started to add more sky pictures to create another background. This is uh, the background that I will start with and because I wanted to emphasize the tree and the rest of my characters I have added levels to darken up everything and on a layer set to color dodge I have painted with a magenta color to make the sky more saturated. And now I'm going to tell you how I created this arcade made of uh, stones. This picture was the picture that uh, I started with and I have uh, selected everything but the sky and I have applied a mask and then I have duplicated the layer, applied the mask and from here I started to cut some parts of this image and I selected uh, this part and um, copy it with this part I started to play and to modify it to have that final arcade shape. After, um, let's say, one hour of uh, mixing that uh, part of uh, those mountains, I end up with uh, this result. So I imported uh, the result here as a smart object and uh, now everything that remains is to adjust the colors to match the rest of the background. So for that the first thing that I always do is to add uh, a levels adjustment layer where I decrease the whites. With the uh, exposure, I decreased the exposure to make it even darker. And because I wasn't uh, satisfied enough, I added uh, more um, shadows by using a layer set to soft light. And uh, I have painted with a black color. For that, you have to go to layer, new layer, and here set the blending mode to soft light, and then fill it with 50% gray. Then take the brush tool and select a dark color from the rocks. And with that you will paint and you will have some shadows. This works exactly like the way a burn works from this uh, dodge and burn. 
And then to add some highlights that at this moment uh, they don't make any sense because we don't have any light sources but we will have the light that will come from the character and also from the tree but I'm going to uh, explain you how I created those highlights because I will repeat this process a lot of times in this uh, tutorial. So go to layer, new layer and the way I create uh, my uh, highlights is by using linear dodge and fill it with black. I'm going to take again the brush tool and as I said I'm going to paint with um, some orangey color here on this part and on the top part I'm going to paint with some bluish color. So now the lights don't really look that well that is because we need to apply blend diff. So double click on the layer and here down below you have to hold alt and drag the slider more to the right and now if you look you'll see that the lights are uh, much better dispersed and uh, they look more natural i placed uh, the tree on top uh, of uh, those uh, rocks first thing as i said that i'm always doing is to add the uh, levels and here i have increased a bit the contrast to change the color of uh, the tree i added a hue and saturation so add a hue and saturation and here press colorize and now you can play with the colors. In my case, I went for uh, this um, desaturated magenta color. I'm interrupting this video to let you know that subscribing to my channel is free and it will help me a lot to keep on posting high quality videos. And if you want to support me more, press that join button that you can find underneath this video. Then I repeated that process with the highlights. So I went again to layer, new layer and here I selected linear dodge and uh, double clicked, hold alt and drag this slider to around 80% and now I will paint with a color similar to the background so I'm holding alt and I'm selecting this color from the sky and I'm painting on the sides to have a bit of uh, that color uh, on the sides of my uh, tree and to have more uh, saturated colors of my tree I have played with color dodge so it works the same you go to layer new layer and here set the blending mode to color dodge fill it with black double click on the layer and apply the blend if then hit ok and now I'm going to select uh, this really saturated color and I'm going to paint on the tree and now my tree looks uh, more uh, magically more uh, you know uh, saturated and now to create that uh, magic that uh, it's uh, filling the whole tree and also the rocks I created uh, that by using uh, two solid color adjustment layers so first one I'm going to solid color and here I'm going to uh, select uh, this uh, blue color all right and set the blending mode to linear dodge okay so double click on the layer and here let's apply the blending first to around 10 percent hit ok and go on the mask select the mask and click invert to create those magical veins i'm going to use uh, this lasso tool and i'm going to uh, randomly create some shapes uh, something uh, like that and after that you hold alt and press delete and you have created uh, that shape so you have to repeat the process all over again and the way I uh, was doing this was to select the darker parts of the tree not the brighter parts so uh, the magic will come from those dark parts Alright, so uh, when you, let's say you finished, you have to duplicate this layer, so uh, hold alt and drag this uh, layer on top and now instead of linear dodge use color dodge and double click on the layer and remove that uh, blend if so just drag this slider uh, back to zero and hit ok. This is how it looks after a while, after I have, uh, as I said, manually drew those uh, veins on the tree and also on the rocks. And to emphasize those uh, magical veins i have added a color dodge on top of them so uh, the same thing go to layer new layer and here select color dodge and fill it don't forget to fill it with black and now with the brush tool and i have selected this bluish color if you paint you'll see that you'll add uh, a really really cool glow on uh, the parts that uh, you are painting with uh, that uh, blue color 
So this is how it looks after I played with uh, that color dodge. As you see the glow is more intense and behind the tree now I have uh, added more color dodge. So uh, I just paint it with uh, white and uh, orangey color behind the tree and also with a white color. And now my tree looks uh, very dreamy, looks uh, really, really important in my design. Now for this uh, little guy, I have uh, selected uh, by using uh, select subject and then because it didn't really select it that well I uh, took the lasso tool hold shift and I have added some parts uh, to the selection uh, added a mask and selected uh, the this uh, really cute reptile and then I drag it into my artwork after I imported the, the lizard the little reptile here into my design I noticed two things, one thing, this uh, right uh, limb, this right arm doesn't really look that well. A thing that I did was to uh, duplicate the layer and flip it uh, horizontally and use the back uh, limb, the back uh, leg as the right arm. And the second thing that I didn't like was the tail, I use a crocodile uh, tail, so I select it again by selecting subject, edit a mask and import it, uh, this tail into my design. And after I imported the tail, I went to edit puppet warp and here I have uh, applied some points and uh, tried to uh, find a really good uh, angle and position for the, the tail. After I found a position for this tail, I added uh, a Gaussian blur, so one uh, radius pixel. I added a levels to uh, make the tail darker. After that, I wanted to have some shadows underneath this uh, reptile, so with a levels adjustment layer, uh, I have uh, added uh, some uh, shadows and more shadows underneath some contact shadows using a layer set to multiply where I have painted with a black color and then the rest like uh, I did before was to add uh, levels and uh, color adjustments to match the little lizard with the rest of uh, the design so uh, I darken up that uh, right limb by using levels and then uh, the same, I did the same thing with uh, the entire lizard. Highlights, as I uh, showed you on the tree, by painting on a layer set to linear dodge. And then for the rim lights, I have uh, made them by using the same linear dodge, but without the blend if. So for that, you create a new layer, the same thing as I said, on a linear dodge, fill it with black, and now take the brush tool, I'm going to paint on the sides to create uh, those rim lights. So it's just a matter of patience. You have to, uh, you know, take your time and to create uh, those tiny rim lights. So this is how I added the uh, rim lights by using uh, this linear dodge and on top with some white color I have painted on a layer set to color dodge and repeated the process this color on a layer set again to color dodge and also this color this red color to have uh, as I said more glow on top of my reptile. So the original uh, women the character that face runner provided was uh, really uh, low quality because of the original photo and i really didn't like that so i had to modify her entirely so from the original um, photo that face runner provided i uh, removed the lamp and also part of the head because uh, there i will replace that part with real hair and I really didn't like this uh, left hand because it really didn't do anything so uh, it was too inert I had to you know remove it and try to uh, duplicate uh, this right hand to simulate like uh, left hand first thing I have uh, mask that left hand and I have duplicated the layer I added a mask and duplicated her again just like that and added another mask and now it looks like uh, it's a left hand over there then I darken up everything by using my favorite levels and went to Envato and downloaded uh, this dress and use it here as uh, my character dress and because it was a big difference, be, uh, a quality difference between uh, my layer and the original uh, woman's uh, clothing, I have added a noise filter. So go to filter and here on the noise add noise and I have added 9% uh, noise. 
and then I have added a mask and kept only those parts of the dress. With the hue and saturation I desaturated the red color and with the levels I darken up the dress even more and with the hue and saturation I have changed the color of the dress. And then I went to photomanipulation.com and used their hair packs. They are just amazing. Uh, it's a game changer. You have to try those uh, hair packs. Uh, you just drag and drop their already PNG files. And as I said, I use the hair from uh, photomanipulation.com. This is uh, a game changer because you save a lot of time using the real hair. Uh, as a PNG files. Yeah, I uh, place that hair on top of uh, the original hair and use uh, some hue and saturation to change the color of the hair and levels to darken up the hair uh, even more. So I place her here and I made her uh, bigger to stand up as my main character in this design. I added curves to lighten up her right uh, part because we have some lighting coming from the right side. With curves adjustment layer, again, I have changed her colors by modifying a bit the red, the green, and also the blues, and added those highlights using linear dodge to paint with some orangey color on the right side. Then I added this lamp, also from uh, Envato. It's a 3D element and the usual things to darken up and change in the colors and adding some highlights. And then on the left side, I have added a staff so uh, this staff actually is made from two other staffs so uh, those uh, let me show you uh, those are two staffs again from Envato elements I placed uh, one on top of another and I have uh, added some mask and now it looks uh, in her hand like uh, she's holding the same staff and the same thing I have added levels and uh, some tiny highlights on the margins. For this magic, you have to watch my other tutorial with the magic book where I am explaining you step by step how to create this uh, type of magic. It's not really that hard, but it requires a lot of practice. And my uh, usual steps with the highlights. So for the floating island, designing them isn't uh, really that hard. The hardest part is to find the right stock uh, images. So that took me a lot of time to find the right stock images and let me explain you how I created uh, one of the floating islands. So basically you need to find some isolated mountains uh, just uh, like uh, this picture and you have to select uh, the rest of uh, the sky to remove the rest of the sky. I did that in this picture with uh, the magic wand. Then hold alt and click on the mask and then I have uh, used the lasso tool and selected uh, only this part of uh, this uh, mountain. Now with this part of the mountain I press ctrl T, right click and flip it vertically. So actually this will be the base for my uh, floating island. As I said this is one of the most important steps to create uh, this base for your islands to find the right stock images. Now what? And then for the top part I have used this picture and I selected uh, this uh, island from the middle of uh, the photo and after that I have added a mask and uh, dragged this one on top of my other one. So basically you need to uh, place one on top of uh, the other one and then uh, just uh, use the mask to uh, hide some parts. This is how you start creating those floating islands and then all you have to do is uh, to add some more uh, you know trees on the sides to have uh, to make it more realistic as you know like floating islands uh, really exist <laughs> you see this part here that goes off the mountains is really important so you must have more like uh, on the other side so i'm duplicating this and uh, keep this part here let's say and then I uh, use the brush tool and uh, ma mask uh, the rest and I'm keeping uh, that part that goes off the picture and uh, you know it looks much better like that and then by adjusting the rest of the colors you will end up with a floating island so uh, as I said those are the pictures that I have used one on top of uh, the other one and then just uh, color adjustments to match the top with the bottom and because they are far away, I have added also a Gaussian blur to them. So on the bottom part, I have added a one pixel uh, Gaussian blur and also the same thing on the top, a one pixel uh, Gaussian blur. Then uh, levels to darken up everything 
also the top one and then I added uh, this uh, little bonsai I have selected the bonsai and uh, place it as I said uh, to um, go off the island a bit to look more realistic and I have added uh, you know levels to darken up uh, that tree and also I have added some uh, cascades I have selected this uh, part of the water from from another cascade and also uh, I have manually drew some uh, white uh, lines here to simulate the dropping of the water with uh, hue and saturation I made it darker so it matches the rest of uh, the lightning over there and then with an exposure I have uh, made it a bit brighter and added some highlights to match the lightning that comes from the left side and then on top of them uh, to have some atmosphere I have painted some clouds so yeah this is how I created uh, this floating island and the rest were made by using the same process and those veins I have manually painted some uh, some lines to connect them uh, one uh, with each other then for the camera row filter press ctrl alt shift and i to create a screenshot right click convert to a, a smart object and then go to filter and here choose camera row filter those are the settings that i have used on the basics on the detail and some um, grain to uh, match everything much better together and also because the original photo was a bit grainy and uh, this grain uh, helps a lot and hit ok Welcome to Mr. 23 Review. If you want to have your work featured in my videos, please use the hashtag Mr. 23 Review whenever you post your work on Instagram. The first artist that I'm going to nominate for my Mr. 23 Review is uh, Maxwell Salem. His work is incredible. I didn't even uh, knew that he used my hashtag. And when I saw that uh, he used my Mr. 23 review on, on one of his uh, posts, I was amazed because he is one of the biggest artists on Instagram that I really admire a lot. He's one of the best in creating landscapes. So if you didn't follow his uh, work so far, I suggest you to follow his Instagram account because you'll be amazed by the realism that you'll see in his uh, art. The second artist that I'm going to nominate for my Mr. 23 review this week is NK Fantasy World with this amazing magically design. And the last artist that I'm going to nominate for this week featured artist is Vesna Christina Photography with this lovely design with those two kids and I really love the bluish tones to this artwork. It's really really well done so congrats Christina for this amazing uh, artwork. If you watched this video so far, it means that you enjoyed my content. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, now is the best time to do it. I'm Mr. 23, see you next time.